Praise the Lord. So good to have you tuned in this fine Sunday afternoon. And uh, we've got a, a great program in store for you. We start a new series today of messages talking about surviving the darkness. We're living in dark times and today's message uh, is, is I think it's just right on target. I thank the Lord for giving it to me, but that'll be a little bit later on in the program. We've got uh, children's time coming up. Of course, Brother Tyler is, uh, is here with announcements. We have Veterans Day that's coming up this week. A lot of things going on, a lot of wonderful people who are watching. Hello, sis. I see you just uh, tuned in, my sister Deborah Grant. Good to have you watching. Of course, Miss Margie Deer and uh, Dwight Cockrell, Miss Phyllis Smith, we're all watching. Praise the Lord. Johnny Deer, good to see you all watching. And of course, my cousin down in uh, uh, Texas, good to have you watching. A lot of things going on in our society today, in our world today. But there's one thing for sure. Jesus is still on the throne and he's still in control. So don't be discouraged. Be encouraged. In Jesus' name, praise the Lord. I'm going to start preaching right here. But anyway, let's go on, and uh, we'll be back in just a few minutes. Brother Tyler will be back with announcements. So good to have you watching. God bless you. Welcome to the Foolish or Wise Game Show, where we ask you to choose, was the decision foolish or wise? All you have to do is listen closely to each question. If you think the choice was foolish, you'll sit down. If you think the choice was wise, please stand up. That's right, folks. You have two choices, foolish and wise. Let's see how well you do. First up, let's start easy, shall we? Here's the decision made, and you have to decide if it was foolish or wise. Michael left his bike in the front yard during a rainstorm. Was that a foolish decision or a wise one? Stand up if it is wise, and sit down if it's foolish. I would say that was foolish. Michael didn't take care of his bike during the rain. Okay, folks, question number two. Angie talked to her friend during the whole Bible lesson. Was that a foolish decision or a wise decision? Stand up if it was foolish and sit down if it was wise. Another foolish decision. By talking, Angie could have missed out on what God wanted to say to her. Okay, here's another chance for you to guess foolish or wise. Tiffany skipped church and stayed outside to eat a snack with her friends. Was that foolish or wise? Come on, Tiffany. That was a foolish choice. 
We need to put worship first. God is worthy of our worship. Okay, last one. Are you ready? In today's Bible lesson, half of the bridesmaids had enough oil for when the bridegroom came so they didn't miss him. The other half did not make sure they had oil, so they missed seeing the bridegroom. If you think the bridesmaids who were ready were the wisest, please stand up. Jesus' parable is a warning that we need to make sure we are preparing, so we are ready to meet Jesus when he comes back. Are, are you, you ready, ready for, for Jesus? Jesus? Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Brother Tyler Fox, Youth and Children's Pastor here at First Baptist Calico. And like always, it's great that you're tuning in. And there are some announcements. First, I just want to say it's been a great day here in Calico Rock. Uh, two services this morning, 8 a.m. and, of course, uh, 10 a.m. with Sunday School at 9. And Brother Kevin, our pastor, preached both services this morning at 8 and 10 and uh, he did a great job, so we are excited about that. And we're excited about letting people have the opportunity to come to uh, the service with a little more people at 10 or the smaller service at 8. We also started back Children's Church this morning during our 10 a.m. service. And so we, uh, we had a good turnout of five students this morning. Really, really enjoyed having our pre-K through our third grade back in Children's Church. That is something we really enjoy here at First Baptist. Don't forget our Bible study tonight at 6 p.m. Uh, you can come and be live in the sanctuary. Uh, Brother Kevin is still in John chapter 10, or you can watch it on Facebook, and we always put it on our YouTube page. All you have to do is just search YouTube for First Baptist Church Calico Rock, and you can find all of the videos we've done since March. We have over 60 videos on there, and so you can watch all of our stuff right there on YouTube. And, of course, next Sunday... Uh, two services, 8 a.m. and 10 a.m., 9 a.m. is Sunday school, and of course, 2 p.m. is our broadcast. So we have a lot of stuff going on on Sundays. And speaking of stuff going on, uh, on the screen, you're going to see all of our church information. Uh, we show it to you every week. Uh, this is just the ways to get a hold of us if you need us this week. Uh, Brother Kevin's number, my number, the church office, our website, the email. And just anything you need, just let us know. Maybe you need us to pick up your tithes or offering, or maybe you just need to, uh, to talk to somebody. Whatever you need, the church information is right there. And speaking of stuff that you might need, I need to tell you that next week is the deadline for Operation Christmas Child. Now, this is something that we love doing here at First Baptist, and this is uh, all about the shoe boxes. And these shoe boxes are sent all around the world. And if you've never heard of this, this is just a great, great ministry. And so we need those shoe boxes back by next week. Or if you bought things for the shoe boxes, then we need you to bring them. Our women, the WMU, they do a great job with this. And so we need all that by next Sunday. And for more information on this amazing ministry, here's a video about Operation Christmas Child. I've had a lot of people tell me I'm lucky, but I tell them I'm chosen. My name is Karabo Maretlani. I was born in Lesotho, Southern Africa, and was raised in the villages. When I was about five years old, I lost my father. And not long after my father's death, my mother left me at my grandmother's house and I never saw her for years. So my grandmother became a mother. She told me a lot of things, including how to read and write. But most importantly, she told me about God. Loneliness in my life began when I lost my grandma, the woman who raised me. I had to say goodbye to my love, to my grandmother. 
then a year after my grandma's passing, my mother also passed away. I was faced with the sad reality of being an orphan, which is something that I dreaded the most. I had a home and a house in the villages, but I had no parents. I was alone. My uncle brought me into his home in the city. It was there in the city that I, I met a friend, actually, who invited me to a church. There was a truck filled with his shoeboxes. I received a shoebox myself, and I remember that shoebox filled one of the holes in my heart, and that was the hope of having something that belonged to me. I had lost everything, so the gift of the box gave me that hope this belongs to me, and it really filled my heart. I realized God gave me what I was always in need of. I made a choice to personally seek Him. Today, I have a family, and I'm no longer an orphan. I know I'm chosen. Someone took their time to work hard and to pack my shoebox and God used them to give me hope and to feel what my heart was in need of. So today, if you hear the voice of God, do not harden your heart. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So I'm asking you to go prepare a gift today, peg a shoebox, give someone hope and love somebody today, and spread the gospel. This truly is an amazing ministry of Franklin Graham, the son of the late Billy Graham. This is a ministry that he's led for many years now. And it might seem like you're simply putting toys and different things in a shoebox. But just like you heard from that testimony, this is giving people all around the world, specifically children, hope. And, you know, that's one thing that we really try to get to our kids here is, listen, you know, not all the children have the same things that we have. And, I mean, that shoebox full of different things, man, it can make such an impact on a young child. And not only can it give them presents, but, man, it can touch their hearts and it can lead to them making a decision for Jesus. And so you still have a week left. If you want to be a part of this amazing ministry, um, reach out. Uh, you can call our church office. And, of course, um, Coach Hamby, uh, she does an amazing job of kind of leading this every year. Uh, maybe you don't want to do a shoebox, but maybe you just want to donate some money. There's all the information. Once again, just remember that we need to have that all by next Sunday, the 15th. And something else that's coming up this week is this Wednesday is a very special day. It's Veterans Day. And this morning, uh, we played a video. And this was a video that really touched a lot of our hearts at church this morning. And it reminded us the importance of the holiday we're gonna celebrate. Here's a video about Veterans Day. Three teens were arrested today for defacing the Kensington Park War Memorial overnight. The destruction includes painted messages against the military and the war in the Middle East. The three teens were picked up in the early morning Rick, hours after evidence was left at the scene. Grandpa, something wrong? Some people sure have short memories and those who are too young to know need to be taught. Come on, I, I want to show you guys something. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. At dawn on the morning of the 6th of June, 1944, 225 Rangers jumped off the British landing craft and ran to the bottom of these cliffs. 225 came here. After two days of fighting, only 90 could still bear arms. These are the boys of Puente Lobo. These are the men who took the cliffs. These are the champions who helped free a continent. 
These are the heroes who helped end a war. You were men who in your, quote, lives fought for life and left the vivid air signed with your honor. In the name of God and country, I learned to defy gravity. To honor my family, I lived in the belly of a beast. I fixed the hearts of iron monsters. I became a worm in the mud for dignity, for honor, for righteousness' sake, for God and country. I fought for you. I fought for you. For you. I fought for you. I fought for you. I fought for you. I fought for you. For you. For you. For you. For you. I fought for you. I fought for you. I fought for you, and I'd do it again. This morning, during both services, uh, we had our veterans stand up after this video, and we recognized them, and we thanked them for their service. And so if anyone is watching, I mean, if you've served in the military, thank you. Thank you for your service, and thank you for your dedication. Um, it's a very important day coming up Wednesday, and uh, we're looking forward during WASH to celebrate it with our students and help them understand the importance of Veterans Day. We also have some prayer requests. We need to pray for Miss Iris Tugwell from West Plains, Missouri. We need to keep Miss Iris in our prayers. And we also, of course, need to continue to pray for, of course, Nadine and Stan Sublet. Uh, they're church members here in Calico Rock. We love them. And we just need to keep Miss Nadine and Stan in our prayers uh, during this time. And, of course, anyone uh, with different issues uh, going on. A lot of people are sick. A lot of church members uh, with COVID, with sinuses, just everything's going on the flu unfortunately and so um, we are definitely remembering our people in our community and our church right now let's pray together father we're so thankful to come together we're so thankful father to be able to have this broadcast and to be able to reach people in different areas in different states and and father lord we just we thank you for this country uh, father lord we thank you for those who have served and protected us Lord, both past and present. And Father, we thank you for each person watching. Lord, we know that you have a purpose for this ministry. And Lord, Father, we just pray that, Lord, this broadcast, Father, through the different things that we do, and most importantly, through the preaching of your word, Father, will touch people. And Lord, if there's anyone who does not know you, Lord, Father, we pray that through this broadcast, they can know who Jesus is, Father. Lord, that he loves them, and Father, he has a plan and a purpose for them. Lord, that is the most important thing that we can ever realize. Lord, we pray for Miss Iris. Lord, we pray for those in our church. And Father, we pray for Stan and Nadine, and we pray for the others, Lord. Father, we just, we lift them up to you, and we know in prayer is the best place that we can reach people. So, Father, we just ask you to be with this time now, Lord. Be with this broadcast. We ask this in your name, in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.
Bibles this morning be turning to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Today we're going to start a new series of messages entitled Surviving the Darkness. Surviving the Darkness. You know, I grew up in the late 60s and early 70s. I'm telling you my age. But anyway, one of the things that I remember about going to church in the late 60s and early 70s is that almost every message that I heard at church during this time was about the coming of Jesus. I mean, it seemed like all the evangelists, all the pastors, even our local pastor at our home church was proclaiming and preaching that the end was near. Jesus was just about to come and we need to prepare ourselves. We heard that on the televisions and in our churches. And they were saying, he's going to come before the year 2000. He's coming before the year of 2000. Yet here we are 20 years into the new century. Yet, if there was a rapture, guess what? We all missed it, amen? And then after 9-11, we heard a cry from the evangelists. We heard a cry from pastors and preachers that the end is near. Jesus is fixing to come. But it's been 19 years. Can you believe it? 19 years since 9-11. And God is still long-suffering today. And the rapture has not yet occurred. I believe that we once again, most likely after this election that we've had, that we're going to be flooded with messages from evangelists and from pastors and preachers that Jesus is about to come. The end is near. I think we'll probably start hearing these messages. Now, I didn't say all that to bring doubt into your heart or doubt into your mind. One thing is for sure, my friend, Jesus is coming again. But I don't know when he's coming. You don't know when he's coming. The Bible says nobody knows when Jesus is coming. But there's one thing for sure, he is coming. And he could be today. He could be any day. That's why I need to be ready. I want to be ready. We need to be ready. For his coming because it could be any day. Over the next few weeks we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 24 and Matthew chapter 25. And these two chapters contain some of the most unsettling statements that Jesus ever made. In these chapters he talks about what life is going to be like before the end comes. And, and he, he talks about how the end will occur and, and, and what we're supposed to be doing in the meantime. Now, these messages that we're going to be looking at over the next few weeks, they're not going to be about us trying to figure out when Jesus is going to come. That's not what we're going to be doing. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be focusing on what you and I can be doing in the meantime. What you and I can do to survive the darkness. I said darkness because the times in which we live in, I believe we are living in some dark times. 9-11 proves that we're living in some dark times. The persecution of Christians over the entire world is proof that we're living in dark times. The hatred that people have one for another is proof that we're living in dark times. The fact that 21 out of every 100 babies are aborted, they're murdered, that proves to me that we're living in dark times. Amen? Today's message is entitled, When Trouble Comes. When Trouble Comes. Matthew chapter 24, we're going to look at the first 25 verses of Matthew chapter 24. If you have that, say, I have it, Pastor. Let's stand in the reverence to the reading of God's Word. Matthew chapter 24, beginning in verse 1, going through verse 25. 
Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us when these things shall be, and what will be the sign of your coming at the end of the age. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight may be in the winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be great tribulation. Such has not been since the beginning of the world unto this time. No, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Then if anyone says to you, look... Here is the Christ, or there, do not believe it. For false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. And then finally, verse 25, see I have told you beforehand. Let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this day. Thank you for these who've come out to this early service. Lord, I pray that you would bless them. Lord, I pray you'd bless your word this morning. Lord, open our hearts and our minds to receive it. Change us, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. You may be seated. Now, do you see why I said these verses are unsettling? I mean, it talks about wars. It talks about rumors of wars. It talks about earthquakes and famines and uh, persecution and death and betrayal. It even mentions their distress unequaled from the beginning of time. I'm going to tell you, that's pretty unsettling, amen? And how in the world do we as Christians survive this kind of peril? Some of you might be saying, well, preacher... Forget the earthquakes and the famine. You should see the peril that I'm going through in my personal life right now. I mean, I'm on the brink of bankruptcy and my family is falling apart and my children, they're rebelling against me and, and preacher, my health is failing and, and I've never been so afraid in my life before. But whether we as Christians are experiencing tribulation on a personal level or we see it on a global level, the words of Jesus found here in Matthew chapter 24 can be applied even to our lives today. Do you want to outlast the darkness? Do you want to outlast the darkness? There are three things I want to mention to you we need to remember to do during times of tribulation, during times of darkness, so that we may survive the darkness. The first thing to do is this. When trouble comes, keep your head on straight. Keep your head on straight. And when I say keep your head on straight, I see two things 
that Jesus actually mentions in our text about keeping our head on straight. First of all, he says, don't believe everything you hear. Don't believe everything you hear. Look back at verses 4 and 5. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. Now what Jesus is saying here is, don't believe everything you hear. Don't be easily fooled. You know, I get so tickled sometimes at the Facebook messages or emails that I get from time to time. And people are saying things like, share this and send it to 20 of your friends. And if you do that within the next 10 minutes, you'll get $1,000. Or maybe this one, I've seen this a lot here lately. Be one of the first 500 people to tell me what this number is and I'll send you $5,000. Or my favorite is, share this with your friends for a free $100 gift certificate from Walmart. And boy, everybody believes it and they start sharing it and sharing it. And never receive a gift certificate from Walmart. Or what about those great advertisements we see on Facebook? I mean, they're coming from China. And you've got this great piece of equipment that probably sells for $5,000 or more here. You know, really what it sells for. But they'll have the video on there and they'll say, Today only you can have this for $189. And there are people out there who are falling for that. And they're sending this money to them and sending this money. And then you read about what they get. They get a little replica about one-eighth the size and can't do anything about it. Listen, my friend, we live in a world filled with lies and liars. The Bible says that Satan is the father of all lies. And because Jesus knew that the end times would bring about so many lies, he warned us in our text today not to believe everything you hear. My mama used to say, don't believe anything you hear and only half of what you see. <laughs> I thought she actually came up with that, but really I find out in scripture, Jesus told us something very similar 2,000 years ago when he said, don't believe everything you hear. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. Keep your head on straight. Next, I believe Jesus is not only saying, don't believe everything you hear, but I believe he's also saying, don't become an alarmist. Don't become an alarmist. Look at verses 6 through 8. And you will hear of wars and rumors of war. See that you're not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Our nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Here's what Jesus is saying. He says, don't panic every time you hear bad news. Now, folks, I'm going to tell you, there are a lot of folks who are panicking in our society right now. There are a lot of folks who are out there panicking today because of the results from our election. But let me tell you something. My future doesn't rest on who sits in Washington. My future doesn't rest on who's in the Congress. Amen. Let me tell you something. I serve one much greater than the President of the United States of America. Amen. And his name is Jesus Christ. And Jesus is saying here, don't become an alarmist. I know all these things sound bad, and they are. You might be hearing bad news in your personal life right now. Maybe you're afraid about losing your job, or maybe you're afraid that your marriage is on the rocks. Uh, maybe you're afraid that what's going on in our country right now, and all these things are potentially devastating. They are. But my friend, let me tell you, don't panic. Keep your head on straight. Now let me say this. I know we can't just ignore these warning signs. I know we just can't sit on our stools of do nothing during these times. 
But we have to remember, we are strangers here. You have to remember, this is not your home. We are strangers here because of Christ. We are not of this world. We are aliens here. This is a sin-cursed world. And since the very first sin, uh, there's never been a world that was God-friendly. And guess what? In its present state, it'll never be a world that's God-friendly. But let me tell you something, my friend. Jesus is coming back one day and he will make every wrong right. Amen. So first... To survive the darkness, keep your head on straight. Keep your head on straight. Secondly, keep your heart in the right place. Keep your heart in the right place. Look at verses 9 through 13. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended. They will betray one another and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Look at verse 12 and 13. Very important. And because lawlessness will abound. Another translation says because evil abounds. The love of many will grow cold. Because of lawlessness, the love of many will grow cold. But look at 13. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. Did you get those last two verses? Verses 12 and verse 13. Did you notice that Jesus equates love with endurance? Listen, if you're going to be zealously protective of of any aspect of your spiritual life, make sure it's that you guard your heart. Make sure that you guard your heart. Don't let your love grow cold. You know, too often we equate enduring to the end with maybe doctrinal purity. How how we think people should live. uh, Or maybe exercising a bold faith or or, uh, uncompromising holiness. And I don't want to minimize these things. They are important. But we almost... We we always must remember that God is concerned mostly with your love life. (laughs) And I mean that by how you love him and how you love each other. That's what's important, most important to God. It's your love life. Love is supreme. The Bible says in John 13, 35, by this all people will know that you're my disciples if you have, what does it say? If you have love one for another. Not how well you know the Bible. Not how much you give on the offering plate. Not how high you jump or how loud you shout it is, honey. But it's how much you love one another. It says, because of the evil in the world, many, their love will wax cold or their love will grow cold. You know, Jesus even said the two greatest commandments were that we love God with all the heart, mind, soul, and strength and to love our neighbor as ourselves. He says, these are the two greatest commandments. He says, all the other commandments hang on those two. So if you want to survive the darkness... Keep your heart in the right place. Which means keep loving God and keep loving other people. No matter how dark the world may be, keep loving God and keep loving other people. By doing this, he says, you'll endure until the end. And then lastly today, keep your feet on the pavement. If you want to survive the darkness, keep your feet On the pavement. Let's read verses 13 and 14 again. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. Now look at verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. Jesus mentions endurance here in verse 13. I stated that in my last point. 
And yes, he's talking about our endurance when it comes to loving God and loving people, but it also means something else. It means that during times of tribulation, even when the world turns dark, we as God's people, we as the body of Jesus Christ should keep keeping on for Jesus. Keep keeping on for Jesus. Even in the midst of everything that's this unrest that we see in our society today, we are to continue preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Even though we see a world that's turning dark around us, Christians are to keep doing the job that God has called them to do. And even when the very our very loved ones turn dark and trouble surrounds us on every hand, we are to keep doing what we've been commissioned to do, and that is to preach the gospel, to evangelize, to be a shining light into a lost and dying world. You know a mistake that many Christians make is that we become nothing more than an analyst of the darkness. A mistake we as Christians often make is we become nothing more than an analyst of the darkness. We become critics of the darkness. That's all you ever hear. We become critics of the darkness. We just talk about the bad things. We talk about how they're going to get worse. And oh, it's just awful. Did you hear this? Did you hear that? Oh, it's just awful. That's not the gospel of the kingdom. That's not the gospel of the kingdom. You say, well, Brother Kevin, what is the gospel of the kingdom? The gospel of the kingdom is that Jesus Christ left the portals of heaven. He came down to this earth and put on a fleshly body and he was beat and he was bruised and he was sacrificed and he willingly gave his life on a cruel cross and then he was put in a tomb and on the third day he arose again and Jesus is at the right hand of the Father today and you can have eternal life through him if you'll just believe in him and make him the Lord of your life. Folks, that's the gospel of the kingdom. Praise the Lord. And Jesus didn't just give you life. We're learning on Sunday night, he gave us abundant life. He gave us abundant life that's full of joy and full of peace and full of power and full of meaning. And yes, it's even full of blessings. Amen. That's the gospel. That's the life that God promises us. And that's the message that we are to share with the world. See, no matter how dark the world becomes, it doesn't change the truth of God's message. And no matter how dark our lives become, it doesn't change the truth of God's message. It doesn't matter who says in Washington. It doesn't change the truth of God's message. Remember, trials and tribulations are temporary, but God's promises are forever. They are eternal. Even when you're going through the fire, keep your feet on the pavement. In closing this morning, you know the Bible never promises us that we'll have an easy life. I remember that old song. I never promised you a rose garden. <laughs> you know God never promised us as his children an easy life. He didn't. And if you think just by living for Christ. That you'll never have any troubles. You'll never have any trials. You'll never have any tribulations. Somebody has lied to you. Because living for Jesus Christ. Is not an easy life. In fact, the Bible teaches us, promises us just the opposite. Jesus said that the rain's going to fall on the just as well as the unjust. Paul even said in Timothy chapter 3 verse 12, everybody who wants to, everybody who wants to live a godly life in Jesus Christ will be persecuted. Now, whether we're living in the last days or not, I don't know. Jesus may come before I get through this morning. Or he may not come for hundreds of years. I don't know if we're in the last days or not. 
I can go by what the Bible says, and I do believe it personally. We are living in the last days. I see the fulfillment of the Bible, the prophecies being fulfilled, and I believe personally we're in the last days. But Paul also believed that in his time. I don't know whether we're in the living in the last days or not. We're going, but whether we are or not, we're going to experience times of darkness in our lives. We're going to experience times of darkness in our society. Times of persecution, times of trials, times of tribulation. For some people, these things are enough to shipwreck their faith. Their winds will be taken out of their sails and you won't see them anymore. Things like that is enough to shipwreck their faith. But it doesn't have to be that way for you. It doesn't have to be that way for me. Because when we're going through tough times, we need to remember to keep our heads on straight. Know what you believe. Don't believe everything you hear. And don't be easily fooled. Secondly, keep your hearts in the right place. Don't let anything take you away from loving God and loving each other, loving people. And then keep your feet on the pavement. Don't stop doing what God has called you to do. I believe doing these things will get you through very difficult times. It'll help you survive the darkness. Amen. Amen. should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches. For his 
Watches me. Yes, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Would you stand and sing this little chorus? I sing because. I sing because I'm free For his eyes on the sparrow And I know he watches me For his eyes I know that he watches me. Thank you for coming this morning.